What is up guys, it is RSC6414 here, back with another video. This time I'm reviewing TNA Impact Wrestling. If you can tell, I've kind of had a loss of voice because I went to Wrestlemania. I've just started gaining it back, that's why there haven't been any videos in the past few days. But I'm going to do my best to do this TNA Impact Wrestling review. Good show overall, new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. I repeat, new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. It was a bit of a shocker to me. I was really happy, still am, and I uh, should be. It was an overall good show, and let's get to the review. The first thing we had was uh, Dixie Carter. As you all know, this week's episode was the return of Dixie. Ever since lockdown, we haven't seen her. She's coming back. It was supposed to be called The Wrath of Dixie. And uh, <clears throat> she comes back. Basically, they open the show. She's walking backstage, and she's like, I've got words, just more words to say, but I'll say it in the ring. We go to our 10-man gauntlet battle royal. The winner of the gauntlet battle royal is the number one contender for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship at Sacrifice. You had all kinds of guys in there. Willow, Abyss, EY, James Storm, Gunner, Eric Young being EY. Um, you had, uh, who else did you have in there? Just a bunch of various other guys. Uh, there was three guys left in the match. Abyss, James Storm, Eric Young. Eric Young would eliminate James Storm. It would leave Abyss and Eric Young in the ring. And Eric Young would clothesline Abyss over the ropes. He would win the 10-man gauntlet battle royal. I did not see this coming. He call, He tells MVP, he says, I know that the winner gets the number one gets the title shot at the sacrifice pay-per-view but I want my shot now he calls MVP out MVP agrees to it he says that uh, Magnus no Magnus rules which means Magnus can't have anybody interfere or else they'll be fired and uh, if he walks out or uh, gets automatically disqualified then he will automatically lose the championship so we have a TNA World Heavyweight Championship main event set for the night Magnus defending the title against E.Y. Eric Young. And uh, the, that takes us into uh, <clears throat> that takes us into our next match. We have a fatal four-way knockouts match. The winner becomes the number one contender for the TNA knockouts title, which Madison Rain holds. This match was back and forth. Velvet Sky, one half of the beautiful people, was ringside. The referees distracted. Velvet Sky uh, sprays hairspray in the eyes of Gail Kim. And Angelina Love hits her finisher, the Botox Injection, a.k.a. the Bicycle Superkick. She pins Gail Kim for the one, two, three. And Angelina Love becomes the official number one contender for the TNA Knockouts Championship. The next thing we have was uh, MVP talking to Dixie. They basically say they're going to take care of what they had in the ring. And uh, Dixie Carter heads to the ring. She blows off Rockstar Spud, so she basically ditches him. Um, Robbie E. backstage early on said he could, that uh, Jesse Goddard's and Zima Ion, the Bromans were supposed to be defending the tag titles that night. Robbie E. had not arrived yet, they said, with travel issues. MVP says they're defending no matter what, so DJ Zima Ion and Jesse Goddard's will defend against the Wolves in a TNA Tag Team Championship match. Dixie Carter heads to the ring. She calls out Bully Ray. Bully Ray says you can't trust anyone in the wrestling business. That's why he crossed her. And he's tired of Dixie Carter. He basically does face tactics to get a big pop from the crowd. And uh, he tells her what he spent his money on a car, all this stuff. And uh, Bobby Roode comes from behind. He tries to throw Bully Ray through a table. Bully Ray counters. He's about to throw Bobby Roode through a ta table. Bobby Roode counters. And then it looks like Dixie Carter may end up getting thrown through the table, but we go to commercial, and we go back, and they're no longer in the ring, so I guess that means Dixie Carter was not thrown through the table, unfortunately. It would have been uh, pretty badass, I do say so my, uh, myself, if Dixie Carter got power bombed through its table. That would have been pretty damn cool. But uh, that didn't happen. Uh, Dixie Carter backstage tells Magnus he's on his own now. She's not going to help him. No one will be in his corner. And that just gives you signs right there that Magnus is in trouble because he's retained the title basically for the past four months uh, with the help of other wrestlers and Dixie Carter. And uh, basically, 
Uh, you have Jesse Goddard's and uh, DJ Zima Ion of the Bromans. They defend the World Tag Team Championship against the Wolves, Davey Richards, and Eddie Edwards. This match was whatever. Um, Davey uh, hits a nice missile drop kick for two. And then the, the Wolves hit the alarm clock finisher where Eddie tosses a guy up. Davey Richards hits the roundhouse kick to the gut. Robbie E. comes out of nowhere. The referee's at the two count. Robbie E. pulls the ref out of the ring and kind of pushes the ref. The ref rings the bell. And uh, the Bromans retain the tag team championships via disqualification when Robbie E. comes back when he was not supposed to be here, interferes in the match, helping the Bromans retain the tag titles. I wouldn't be surprised if the Wolves take on the Bromans at a sacrifice and they finally get those tag titles for more than a week. And, uh, yeah, so then we have Christy Hemme. She comes out. She says she's going to settle it once and for all between Samuel Shaw. She brings out Samuel Shaw. They come out, and uh, Samuel Shaw comes out, and uh, Christy Hemme tells him to close his eyes. He closes his eyes. She's kind of playing around with him like she's actually into him and actually has a crush on Samuel. He's going with it. And then on the Titan Tron, you see a, a psychiatric van pull up. Mr. Anderson comes out. He uh, taps on Samuel Shaw's shoulder in the ring. Shaw turns around. He tries to hit his finisher. But Mr. Anderson hits Mike Check. He drags Samuel Shaw to the psychiatric van before Shaw, can es before Shaw escapes. So Shaw does not get put in the psychiatric van. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the feud between Anderson and uh, Shaw end at the Sacrifice pay-per-view as well because it all started at lockdown. So that was interesting. The segment was kind of bad acting by Christy Hemme. It was just kind of whatever. It wasn't that good in my opinion. But I did think the psychiatric van was a nice addition. And then we have our main event of the evening. Magnus, the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, defends the TNA World Heavyweight Championship against Eric Young, EY, who won the Gauntlet Battle Royal earlier on the night. He said he wanted the match now and not at sacrifice, so he gets it. This match was back and forth. EY hit a uh, elbow drop off the top rope for a near fall. There were a couple near falls throughout the match. Magnus tries to grab the world title at ringside. The referee pulls it away from him. Magnus hits a low blow on Eric Young. He pins him for the one, two. Eric Young kicks out. I thought that might be the end of it. And then Eric Young hits a backdrop into a pile driver. He, Eric Young reverses a backdrop. Hits a pile driver on Magnus, pins Magnus for the one, two, three, and Eric Young is the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. EY, huge shocker here. I was really glad. I'm a fan of Eric Young. He's been in TNA for 10 years with different gimmicks. Just one of the original, not the originals, but he's been there a long time, a lot longer than any other person on the roster. There's been most people on the roster, I should say. So congrats to EY Eric Young. Good match, good win. Eric Young is the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion, so congrats to him. Uh, that's all I can say. I was shocked. I was at loss of words. I thought Magnus was at least going to hold the title till sacrifice. He loses on impact. And uh, that was a good way to uh, have Eric Young pull off an underdog after Daniel Bryan, another underdog in the WWE, wins it at Mania. An underdog in TNA wins it. Eric Young, a fan favorite. I'm happy. Most of the TNA world and uh, fans are happy. So that's good news and a uh, good match. Good way to end the show. And uh, overall, thumbs up uh, with Eric Young winning the title. I'm happy about that. The matches itself were not the best, but uh, with the title, it really saved the episode this week, in my opinion. Segments were whatever. The matches were kind of whatever until the main event. You had some decent... The Gauntlet Battle Royal was pretty good. So I'm not going to completely say it was a terrible show, but it wasn't the best either. But Eric Young winning the title, saved the show, really helped it out. So my overall grade of the show, 5.5 out of 10. 5.5 out of 10. Hope you enjoy, all, all enjoyed this video. Check out my other videos and subscribe. Eric Young is the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion.